Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to session 10 of uh, low pressure boiler training. Uh, my name is Ben Weekly. For those of you who, who have not been involved in the series of boiler trainings, I've been a boiler uh, trainer and operator in northern Minnesota <clears throat> for low pressure boilers for approximately 30 years or better. And uh, it's been one of my passions to train people, uh, both men and women, on the safe operation of boilers and uh, prepare them for how to operate their boilers and uh, prepare them so that they can take their exams and uh, pass licensing so that they can be uh, uh, proper and uh, legal boiler operators in Minnesota. Um, I want to talk just a little bit, like I do in every video, uh, about the manuals or the textbooks that I recommend that you purchase and read. And uh, what I would very highly recommend is that you get low pressure boilers uh, by the American Technical Publishers. It's uh, a boiler book written by Frederick Steingress. And if you go to the American Technical Publishers website, and uh, you'll find these books. Uh, this, is, uh, this here is the study guide, low pressure boilers study guide. And uh, the textbook is uh, invaluable to have. And this will give you all kinds of uh, test questions and just add to your learning uh, ability uh, if you want to fully understand uh, low pressure boilers. What I showed you was edition four and uh, currently they have out edition five. So make sure that you publish those or purchase those and read them thoroughly and study them and keep them for a reference for when you are operating boilers. If you're just beginning as a boiler operator in Minnesota and never had a license before and uh, you don't have uh, much knowledge of boilers, then I'd recommend that you purchase this book, uh, Safe Boiler Operation Fundamentals, and uh, follow along on the appropriate chapters on this as I go through the video series. So this answers a lot of questions and gives you some code and regulations as specific to the state of Minnesota. Okay, having said all of that, uh, this, uh, this particular video is going to be talking about uh, boiler operation safety. And of course, that's what being an operator is all about. As an operator, you are running these boilers and you're there to make sure they run safely. Sure, it's important to run them efficiently and all of that, but uh, safety is paramount when it comes to boilers. Now, we're going to talk about some various agencies and organizations that are critical uh, to the operation, the manufacture, and so forth, the inspection and so forth of boilers. So I would like to say that long before you ever flip the switch on your boiler for the very first time, long before any brand new boiler is ever started and run, there are organizations that have worked for many, many years to ensure that the design of the boilers, uh, the construction of the boilers, the installation of the boilers, and the future inspection and repair of those boilers are done so that those boilers will operate absolutely safe. And so because of these organizations and because of licensing and training of the operators, you very rarely ever hear of any type of boiler explosion. And back in the 1800s, it was a whole different story. Early 1900s, it was commonplace. Now, it is very, very rare. 
let's talk a little bit about some of the regulating agencies that we have in our country. Some of them, some of them are governmental, some of them are private agencies. And uh, some are local, some could be state, some are federal. And uh, they, uh, they form the rules, regulations, and safety practices and standards for all phases, all phases of boiler operation. One of the large organizations in, uh, in the United States that probably all of you are familiar with in some way or another, and uh, that, has, uh, that has meaningful input on the construction and operation of boilers, especially the operation of them, is an organization called OSHA. It's a federal organization and uh, they are instrumental in keeping boilers operating in a safe manner. The, another federal government organization is called the EPA. And uh, years ago, back when I was a young man, uh, the EPA was just in its infancy and it has to do with the environment. And I can remember when my father ran a coal boiler at the high school and it was not run very efficiently. Uh, I can recall standing outside of the school and the coal would be so burned so inefficient, especially when there was very low loads of steam demand. Huge flakes of coal and soot would come pouring and belching out of the stack and it would come down in the surrounding area of the school like big black snowflakes. So the Environmental Protection Agency is working, uh, has worked over the years to improve the efficiency of boilers so that we have good clean air to breathe. I can't remember a day here in northern Minnesota where we've had, in my experience, cleaner air. It seems like it's, you go outside and you want to hunt or fish in Minnesota. Uh, you want to be able to take a deep breath of good clean air and the EPA is uh, very important in achieving that goal. Another very, very important, probably in my estimation, probably the most important organization is, uh, is uh, called the National Board. And that's kind of short for the National Board of Boilers and Pressure Vessel Inspectors. They were formed in 1919 because of all of the uproar when it comes to uh, boiler explosions and accidents and so forth. Uh, the National Board, uh, uh, they oversee the safe operation, they oversee the construction, the installation and the repair and maintenance of boilers. They also train uh, boiler inspectors. And uh, so the boiler inspectors, whether they be from your state or uh, local jurisdiction, or perhaps from an insurance uh, inspector, they've had training and have had to pass tests to make sure that they are proficient uh, in uh, their knowledge of boiler operation. Another organization out there is the NFPA, which is, stands for the National Fire Protection Agency. They both oversee electrical, uh, electrical components that go into uh, the uh, manufacture and installation of boilers, and they also are involved in the uh, uh, products of combustion uh, safety. Uh, so the NFPA has a two-pronged uh, effort there when it comes to boiler safety, and it involves electrical and it involves the fuel. Uh, another organization that uh, you hear about uh, if you're in any type of maintenance organizations and that's the ANSI, A-N-S-I. Uh, they they uh, provide uh, standards for uh, 
uh, boilers and uh, for component parts that goes into boilers. So ANSI is short for the American uh, National Standards Institute. Very important organization. Another organization that is a private organization is called UL or Underwriters Laboratory. Probably you've heard of UL. They do testing of all types of products that are sold and used by consumers in the United States. They also do testing of products that go into the boilers and uh, so they're a very, very important organization. Then you come to insurance agencies and uh, insurance agencies, uh, uh, some of these agencies specialize in the insuring of boilers in, that are installed in buildings. And uh, so they need to be expert in uh, how these boilers are supposed to be installed and operated and so forth. And uh, many times uh, the boiler inspections that occur on an annual basis in the United States uh, are done by insurance inspectors who have been trained uh, by the national board and uh, maybe by their state and local jurisdictions very knowledgeable people. Uh, one of the most prominent uh, uh, companies, uh, insurance companies, is the Hartford Insurance Company. And so they've been around for many years. When they come around as inspectors and check your boilers, they're not there to see if they can trip you up or just see how smart a guy you are, but they're there to make sure that they're looking at every phase of that boiler installation and the operation of it and the condition of it. They do this for a living every day. You and I operate our boiler every day. They go out and they see hundreds and hundreds of boilers in a year's time. So they become very, very skilled at noticing things that maybe you and I would not see. So it's always important uh, when you're operating a boiler to have somebody that uh, takes a different look at it, has a different set of eyes, maybe sees something that we're doing that isn't quite right and can work alongside us to make sure that that gets corrected and uh, make sure that our boilers are being operated in a safe manner. All of these organizations that I've talked about, OSHA, and uh, the EPA, the National Board, uh, the NFPA, ANSI, UL, and insurance companies, they work together like a huge safety net to make sure that people aren't being killed or injured as boilers are being operated. Well, that kind of concludes uh, this session on, uh, on session 10 for boiler operation safety. Uh, I'll be having uh, another session in uh, uh, session 11. And the next session 11 is really specifically more for Minnesota boiler operators. It will deal with codes and, uh, and statutes as it concerns the operators in Minnesota. And uh, much of what I say that pertains to Minnesota may also pertain to the area where you live in if you do not live in Minnesota. So it's, uh, it'd be worth you uh, listening to session 11 as well. Um, I would uh, recommend that you go ahead and, and uh, read chapter 13 before we get together again and uh, read and review that. It has to do uh, a lot with uh, testing and some further studies on boilers. There are some sample tests in there. But I can't, uh, I can't state it enough that just learning to pass a test is not good enough. Anybody can study just to learn to pass a test and then a week later, 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 percent of what they learned, they don't recall at all. So what I would recommend is that if you stumbled upon this video, 
that you you click on the subscribe button and by doing that it doesn't cost you anything but if you subscribe on that then you can go to the icon on your screen and click on subscribe and it will bring up my website for YouTube and it will show you all the various sessions that I have then you can go back to the very first session that uh, is the introduction session and you can walk your way through in the meantime make sure you get these uh, books that I've talked about order them study them do the study guide and uh, prepare yourself for each lesson as we go along uh, it'll be a great benefit for you these books as you as you read them and study them will be a source that you can go back to as you operate your boilers you know boiler operation itself hasn't changed much over the years water still boils at 212 degrees today just like it did a hundred years ago so use these books as a resource so as you clean your boilers or first start up your boilers or you lay up your boilers in in the off season you can go back to these books and walk through it step by step so you're not missing something and so that you're not just guessing at stuff unless you work with boilers every single day uh, sometimes it's easy to forget some of that stuff many of the boiler operators that I know they may be with their boiler for 5 10 15 minutes or a half an hour on a daily basis they're doing other things they're driving trucks they're making deliveries they're sweeping or they're shoveling snow that type of thing or they're doing maintenance around the building and uh, so being a boiler operator is just a single portion of their entire job responsibilities so these books that I recommend that you get you save them and use them like a library and if you have questions in the future as you operate you can go back and read those and these books are very very knowledgeable books they're probably the Cadillac of the industry and uh, you just can't get along without them so with that we will see you in in session 11 and we'll deal with the state of Minnesota the codes and statutes and things that deal with boiler operators here in this good state. Thank you for watching.